have discussed the group of drugs which are required to be given in a patient with a, a chronic congestive heart failure. Now let me discuss what should be the group of drugs that need to be given in a patient with an acute congestive heart failure. So, in acute congestive heart failure, there will be a sudden fall in the cardiac output. So, once there is sudden fall in the cardiac output, then the individual will land up in what is called as a pulmonary edema. Now the question comes, when the cardiac output reduces, why there will be development of the pulmonary edema? How the pulmonary edema develops is, because we have, this is our four chambered heart and we have the lungs. So the pulmonary artery, it begins from the right ventricle, it passes through the lung in the form of pulmonary capillaries and then it opens into the left way atrium in the form of the pulmonary veins. So, once the individual's left heart is being failed, what will happen is, the left heart is unable to pump the blood into the iota. Left ventricle cannot pump the blood into iota. When left ventricle cannot pump the blood into iota, left ventricle is not in a position to receive the blood from the left atrium. So, left atrium cannot pump or cannot give the blood to the left ventricle. So, when left atrium cannot give the blood to the left ventricle, left atrium becomes completely full. When left atrium becomes completely full, left atrium is not in a position to receive the blood from the pulmonary veins. And when pulmonary vein cannot fill or cannot give its blood to the left atrium, pulmonary vein cannot receive the blood from the pulmonary capillary. So, what will happen? The fluid, it becomes restricted in the pulmonary capillaries. But pulmonary capillaries is getting the blood from the right ventricle continuously through the pulmonary artery. So, the blood from pulmonary capillary is unable to move in the forward direction because of the left heart failure. Upon that, the blood into the pulmonary capillary is coming from your right ventricle. So thereby, what will happen to your pulmonary capillary pressure? The pulmonary capillary pressure increases. Once the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure increases, the fluid from the pulmonary capillary will enter into the interstitium of the lung resulting in pulmonary edema. So initially the fluid will enter into interstitium and subsequently the fluid will enter into the alveoli resulting in alveolar edema or the pulmonary edema. So once the individual develops this particular alveolar edema or the pulmonary edema, the first group of drugs what you have to give is diuretics. And that too, which diuretics you will give? You have to give a high ceiling diuretic which is called a loop diuretic. Which is called a loop diuretic. So those, these loop diuretics will reduce this particular pulmonary edema. Now, now, the second group of drugs what need to be given in these patients with the acute congestive heart failure now what has happened, the heart has been failed, when heart is being failed, the contractile capacity of the heart is reduced. Once the contractile capacity of the heart is reduced, that is what is the consequence leading to the development of pulmonary edema. So the second group of drugs, what we give here is your inotropic drugs. is your inotropic drugs. So, these are the drugs what you need to give in a patient with acute congestive heart failure. We have one more group of drugs which we can give is, now what will happen is, once there is a fluid overload within the ventricle, from the ventricles, there is a release of a substance 
called as a BNP. That is called brain natriuretic peptide. This brain natriuretic peptide is being released from the distended ventricles. Now you see the word itself you see here. It is brain natriuretic natriuretic peptide that means what is the substance doing this substance is causing natriuresis that is it is causing the sodium loss when it is causing the sodium loss along with sodium the water is also being taken out and thereby the fluid level of the individual reduces so the third group of drugs what we can give in these patients with the acute congestive heart failure is BNP analogs. Next, we have one more group of drugs that can be given in patients with this acute congestive heart failure. Now, what has happened in these individuals? The contractile capacity is reduced. So for that, what we are giving? Inotropic drugs we are giving. Second thing, if the contractile capacity is reduced, what will happen to the afterload? Subsequently, we feel that the afterload on the ventricles is increased. So, you give a drug which will increase the inotropic capacity of the heart and which will decrease the afterload on the heart. So, for that, we give what is called inodilators for that we give what is called inodilators the word ino means inotropicity which will increase the contractility dilators are those group of drugs which will cause vasodilatation once there is vasodilatation the afterload on the heart will be reduced so these are the group of drugs what you can give in a patient with an acute congestive heart failure so very important thing when the individual is coming to you with the heart failure symptoms the first you have to assess whether there is pulmonary congestion whether there is fluid overload once you assess that there is fluid overload in the individual the important drugs you need to give is diuretics after giving diuretics once you feel that the congestion is reduced then the next important group of drugs what you need to give in this individual will be ac inhibitors ac inhibitors are the very important drugs that you need to give in patients with the congestive heart failure once the pulmonary congestion is being relieved in the individual